Aloha, everyone. It's 2021. Who could believe it? And it's Wednesday afternoon, and we know what time that is. It's called Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy Day. I'm really pleased to be joined by Maria Tome from the Hawaii State Energy Office. And just a quick little announcement. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And then we're going to talk uh, briefly about the legislative briefing that's going to be held on uh, Friday, the 15th of January, um, uh, later this month. Um, Maria and I have now volunteered, I use the word volunteered, become the co-chairs of the Energy uh, Policy Forum, um, having uh, replacing the uh, previous um, 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 Sherilyn Wee, who, who left uh, to go to the, I think, Consumer Advocate, isn't it, uh, Maria? Yes, yes. Yeah, so we're, we're picking up the slack at, the, at a meeting of the steering committee. We volunteered, and our bosses are allowing us to carry on the legacy of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, started by um, Senator uh, Sharon Morawaki. So let's have the first slide, and I'll talk a little bit about our history. So yeah, we actually started in May of 2002. I mean, can you believe that, Maria? Uh, yeah, I wasn't here. I wasn't involved in the forum at that on that date, but right. yeah, it's it, it was uh, it was good. I remember using a lot of the forum informational material um, and found it very interesting. So I had a good yeah. first impression of. That. Well, I was at, I wasn't there in 2002, but my boss Rick Rochelow from HNEI said, "Mitch, why don't you go over there and take in the meeting?" Some months later, and I've been there ever since. So I think I probably joined towards the end of 2002, just as they were writing some of the reports. But anyway, uh, just to tell you, uh, we're going to tell you a history of the HE, uh, the the Energy Policy Forum. So it's really made up of energy stakeholders and uh, we were convened to develop a new energy strategy. And uh, at the start, as I said, we commissioned five major studies. Then we held an energy policy summit uh, in December of 2003. And then we produced a uh, report or a plan, a long-term energy strategy. So that was uh, the product of all this effort and work. So the next slide, please. So anyway, the compelling cause for Hawaii is the uh, Hawaii's energy challenge. And what is that challenge? It's that we're a distant and isolated state, island state with no indigenous uh, fossil fuels. So like we're 2,500 miles away from the nearest land and we have to import every, uh, most of our energy. And as you all know out there, we suffer from very high energy prices. We did then, in 2003 through 2002, and we still suffer from high energy uh, prices, but you know, hopefully we're gonna get a lot better, but it's been slow. So uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> the, the, the challenges in 2002 was that we were making slow to no pro progress towards energy independence. You know, we we're becoming less energy efficient since 2001 then more energy efficient. This is back in the day, I'm not talking about today. This is when we first formed and we're trying to solve those problems. And, and we had an energy mix that was like, hovered around 89, 90% uh, fossil fuels and we just couldn't break through that. And, and the 10% was mostly because the sugar plantations were producing energy. Isn't that correct, uh, Maria? Yeah, yeah. And then it got worse when the sugar plantations started to close. Right. So we asked the question in 2002, who's driving the bus here? You're like, you know, nothing was happening. <clears throat> there was no measurable improvement or progress. There was no coordinated effort or plan. Political will was lacking uh, and, and no plan. There was a really adversarial climate. Um, there were lots of lawsuits going around. Anybody tried to do anything, particularly the uh, electric utility were blocked for all sorts of reasons, um, serious policy gaps or no policy. And uh, the regulators, that's the uh, PUC and the consumer advocate were really under resourced. Like they had no resources to, to hire the appropriate staff and they had a huge job and they couldn't do it because they didn't have enough resources to do it. Even though in those days and still 
there was a small tax on everybody's energy bill that was supposed to go towards uh, regulation. Isn't that right, uh, Maria? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, I, I remember that as being one of the first real accomplishments of the energy policy forum. You know, what later I think we'll, we'll talk about the governance and the word consensus. <laughs> that was, you know, one of the things everybody agreed was an issue that could be addressed and should be addressed. Right. So we decided to um, uh, change all that. And that's why we brought, you know, pulled together the forum and decided to continue on and said, look, we put up our hands and we said, we'll drive the bus. And uh, because nobody else was driving that bus. So somebody had to drive it. So, you know, based on the principle of, you know, people make things happen, you know, it's, it's not just gonna happen in a vacuum unless somebody steps up to the plate, it probably won't happen because we're all comfortable in our day jobs and oh, well, whatever. So it takes committed stakeholders and champions and a community will, like I will get this done. And, and so it's decided to put it into the university because the university is essentially a neutral party. We're not politicized, we don't, you know, we're not choosing sides. And so you had a neutral forum so that nobody could say we were biased to start the forum. And this was under now Senator Sharon Morawaki who started this. And uh, if anybody knows Sharon, man, she steps up to the plate and she gets stuff done. Um, and, and so she was our fearless leader, truly fearless. And, uh, and so the university, you know, we, we uh, analyzed the situation. We, you know, did these fact-based studies, not just, you know, baloney, but, you know, the real thing, we got actual data. And uh, it was meant to be a non-adversarial and collegial environment, which is what the university, uh, you know, environment is. You know, you, you're, it's a, a free, free speaking place where people can, you know, uh, brain, um, brainstorm and, and no idea is a bad idea. You don't get attacked for your ideas. And so we carried that forward to the policy forum. We wanted that same kind of corporate client where people are not afraid to speak their mind even if their idea is lousy, you know, we're going to let them tell us their plan because you never know out of a lousy idea might come a good idea because people get to talk about it. And from their point of view, it's a good idea. So uh, we have this non-adversarial collegial environment. So we set objectives and developed a strategy. And uh, um, Nina Marita, um, came out with an action plan that was really brilliant. It was like a 10 point plan, like keep it simple, not, not a great big thick document that takes you like forever to read through, but just a little list of action items. And it was really a brilliant concept. And so we took action and let us drive that bus. So we had this 10 point plan and anytime we gave any kind of uh, legislative testimony or whatever, we always referred to it. We kept on keeping it in front of the legislators. So they always knew we had a plan. And if you bear with me, it's still pretty well our plan. Number one was expand renewable opportunities. And number two was energy efficiency in public buildings. Number three, increase solar water and energy efficient appliances. Four, policies and regulations to encourage efficiency and renewables. Five, preserve regulatory protections. Six, invest in planning for sustainable communities. Seven, improve transportation energy efficiency and options. Man, you know, doesn't this sound like, yep. <laughs> these, are, these are all very Isn't similar. What we're still yeah, doing? Yes, and we've made progress in all of these areas. Number eight, support research and development of alternative fuels. Number nine, encourage development, production, and use of biofuels. And 10, ensure secure systems for fuel and electricity grid. So Isn't yeah, great? Uh, yep, yep, yep. I think we'd probably rearrange them slightly and maybe reword, re reword them slightly, but the, the essence is, is there. And, you know, we really have made progress on, on you know, some substantial ones. Uh, it's really slow, you know, it's taken so much effort, but that's what it, that's what it takes, time and effort. And of course, um, knowing what needs to be done first. 
you know, and moving towards th those things that are ready and ripe for development at the time that they are ripe for development. So, so yeah, it's a, well, it, it, yeah, it was a good progress. list. We made progress in all of those uh, uh, tasks. Yeah. And you can see it today reflected in our energy use. You know, I mean, here now we have a, you know, a, uh, a goal of uh, zero, you know, 100 uh, percent clean energy by 2045. I mean, who would have ever thought we could ever get that through? You know, it's such yeah. a it's such a huge uh, goal to get through, but it passed. And the you know the electric utility, you know, they're making pretty good progress. I mean, they're they're hitting their milestones. I mean, maybe it's going to be harder as you get down to the end, like yeah. all the low hanging fruit is being picked. But nevertheless, they're uh, they're going ahead. You know really strong. They're closing down old fossil fuel plants where you've got all sorts of PV coming in uh, at, at utility scale with that and, backup. And a ton of action on individual parts, you know, as far as the energy efficiency and the rooftop solar, you know, huge, huge advancements there, you know, as well. So, you know, grabbing the, the technologies um, and having the market signals align I think we're very, very effective. Um, but, you know, there's, <laughs> we're not done yet, not by a long shot, but it's very important to have a forum, you know, a, a place where folks can discuss not just the popular topics, but the boring topics, the dry topics, the difficult topics. Yeah, I, I know later on in your, um, in your slide deck, it talks about how we, uh, how things are discussed. Right. Yeah. But anyway, we, uh, we progressed on. And uh, so we had two phases. We, first, we developed the grand strategy, which we've just talked about. And, uh, Mina and Marita came up with, with the 10 point plan and, and uh, addressed all these things. And uh, really, um, we had all the people, we had like about 40 or 50 people in the room, uh, all with different agendas and everything else like that. But in this kind of neutral climate, uh, climate, everybody wanted it to work. I mean, everybody in that room wanted the best for Hawaii. And, and they put their personal and even per, perhaps their business interests aside for the common good and made compromises where they could. Like, okay, we don't like that solution, but if you did it this way, we might, let, we might be able to do that. Yeah, and I think that, sorry, the key ahead. word I think is that they could live with it. Exactly. Yeah. So, and we're a consensus organization. It's not like uh, Mitch and Maria can just ram anything through. We, we all have to reach a consensus, which in, in some ways means like, yeah, we're unified. Everybody believes us. But in other ways, it means that we can't just put out our own policy or ideas unless the whole group has, has agreed with that. So one of the advantages of that is it shows the legislators, like when you, when you present them with some new ideas and it's a consensus from all the various organizations that are represented, that the legislators have confidence <clears throat> that this is pretty well accepted. And if they come out with a policy that addresses whatever idea we came up with, that they're not gonna get into a big food fight and they're gonna find that the local population, the, 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 uh, the voters are gonna agree, generally agree with it and not have people marching in the streets. And so it makes it a lot easier for them to pass good policy, knowing that there's a consensus in the community to support that. It's much easier for them to do that. And so we developed this long-term strategy and we did achieve that consensus like I just talked about. And then we went to a phase two. It's like what I call making it happen. Like, okay, we do a lot of these reports. It's not just Hawaii, every government does these reports. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, a lot of effort goes into them and then they end up sitting on the uh, shelf. We call that shelfware. And so, <laughs> Nobody ever does anything about it. It's just forgotten. Everybody gets busy and they don't push it. <clears throat> so we decided, the forum decided, we're going to push this. And so we've been pushing it for like the last 19 years. Um, so we developed a vision and a mission. 
We developed the action plan, which we just talked about with uh, some timelines, although, you know, it's hard to make, you know, hit all your milestones in this kind of environment because it's a, a lot of political. We, we got the 10 point action plan and then we made some uh, rules of the sandbox. We call it the sandbox. We were all in this game together. It's like being in kindergarten um, where you have the rules of the sandbox and, and to address the government government governance issues like how do we work together effectively so we developed an organizational structure we we looked at membership criteria and selection we wanted to have a broad group of people that covered a lot of various uh, in, industry sectors we just didn't want it dominated by one group because we wanted to get a, a, a lot of opinions and once again, we pushed the consensus process. So we developed some budgets because, you know, it's, this isn't free. And uh, thank God HNEI step, stepped up to the plate and has been supporting uh, the uh, forum uh, for the last 19, 19 years, along with some others, but mostly, uh, you know, the College of Social Sciences uh, put in in kind. They supported, for example, some salaries of their staff and all that kind of stuff. So it's not all HNEI, but you know, it was the university supported this. So the university is doing good. I mean, this is this is what universities need to do for the community. We need to come up with solutions for today's problems, and that's precisely what we're doing. And actually, and we, the, you know, oh sorry, the, know. yeah, you know, um, I don't know if um, people have noticed that actually Hawaii Energy Policy Forum was in the College of Social Sciences. And, right. you know, one of the reasons for that is that this is um, an example of a, a working together in this forum and observing how it worked. Did it last? It's actually very successful, you know, when we in um, the public administration program that you know, I got a master's in, we had a lot of fun discussing how do you create effective groups to tackle complex issues across jurisdictions. We had federal, state, county, private sector, um, you know, discussing not only the policy topics, but also very technical topics at times, you know, and so it was how do you structure something so that you have effective communication in a way that respects people's ideas and knowledge and also welcomes in the new folks who have been thrust into a position of um, being active in the energy area? You know, how do you frame the questions in a way that gets input um, that's, in, that's helpful? And so part of this, um, it, it was actually an experiment in a way. And I think it, it did show um, that some of the roles of how you create and nurture and um, sustain these groups um, actually worked quite well. You know, as you mentioned, it's been 19 years. Right. So, you know, you, you have to have a safe space for the discussions and you have to respect the, the information, but you also have to have agreement on how to disagree. The word consensus is a very interesting one. Um, with such a broad range of interests, it's very difficult to reach consensus on a lot of things. But the process of seeking consensus right. is what everybody who's involved in it values, I think, because that way you can raise a question or an issue or a proposal, and you can hear from the folks who are actually engaged in everyday um, working on these topics, how they react to it, what questions they have, what concerns they have, and others can you know, respond and point out what from their experience and knowledge has been a problem or a solution to those. And so um, seeking to reach consensus very often is very interesting and important to coming up with better solutions. Even if you don't reach the consensus, um, you know, and some folks say, oh, it's all about, you know, reaching the con consensus or nowadays, it's, oh, I got to win, right? I got to win and they got to lose. That, that's a whole different dynamic um, right. that's counterproductive to actually finding solutions that are effective and um, sustainable. So, so yeah. I, anyway, so I did want to point out, you know, kudos to the College of Social Sciences for their wisdom in, you know, managing some of this stuff. And since it's part of the fabric and the culture of the organization, sometimes it's just taken for granted. 
you know, it's like, you know, if you can create the conditions for success, um, you're, you've, you've created something of value. So it's not just, um, you know, what topics are, are discussed or what agreements are reached, but what is the, the framework for that to happen? You know, and the word got out, like we were invited by Puerto Rico to go and uh, go to Puerto Rico and tell them how we did it because they were having the same kinds of problems. And so Sharon Morawaki went to Puerto Rico and spent uh, two or three days there educating them on how we, you know, this whole you know, the energy policy forum, what we did, how we did it, the whole nine yards and a uh, very good reception. So, so there you go. Not only are we solving Hawaii's problems, but you know, Puerto Rico is a lot like Hawaii, you know, really high energy costs, et cetera. So they really appreciated uh, what, uh, what we had accomplished here. So um, one other thing is we also, we, we don't just uh, get complacent. Every year we have an annual self-assessment. We continually tune the model. And, uh, you know, we've made some major structural changes as the years have gone through. You know, some things have dropped off the, uh, off the table and other things are, have been put on the table. And, and we have new people that come in once again, refreshing uh, the ideas and uh, different points of view. So it's, it's a very uh, fertile and, and interesting uh, uh, forum. The word forum is to have a forum and discuss things. I just wanna to touch briefly, if I may, on our governance structure. Um, so we, it starts off with, with the uh, forum, uh, well, we have a PI uh, a, a, uh, uh, who is in the College of Social Sciences, as Mar uh, uh, Maria said. So it starts off with him or her. And then in, 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 in our case, uh, and, th and then the forum manages itself. And so we start off, we have two co-chairs uh, and now it's just, just you know, we, we've just entered our chairs, Maria and myself, just in the last couple of weeks. Weeks, <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks. <laughs> weeks. Yeah. You know, of course we had to get buy-in from our, from our masters to allow us to do this. And I'm happy to say Rick Rochlow said, yeah, okay. And uh, supported me and in your case, you know. Scott Glenn. Scott yeah. Glenn yeah. So then we have a steering group. And so uh, we have these working groups and the steering group is made up of the chairs of these various working groups. We have five or six working groups that sometimes changes depending on the requirements. And the, and the, and the steering group uh, sets the overall agenda. Like they look at all the things that we possibly do and they zero in onto the, the uh, priority. They make the priorities of what we're gonna go after. They select the projects and they approve budgets. So, you know, somebody comes in with a good idea, they make a pitch and, uh, you know, if they require just a little bit of funding to maybe bring a speaker in or have a meeting, you know, whatever, how we work in Hawaii, uh, then the forum uh, helps them out with that. So then we have these working groups um, and uh, they're, they're assigned some of these 10 point plan responsibilities. So there's develop action plans. Uh, they propose new policies or ideas uh, for the leg legislature. Um, they vet, you know, check out new legislation that's coming in and, and run it by the membership to say, to get a, a response, like from the membership, what do you think about this legislation? You know, the pros and the cons, and then, you know, tell the legislators, you know, what we think about it. And uh, then we uh, brief uh, the, the general membership. And, the, and then the final one is the general membership. They, that's all the people in the forum and they approve all these projects and plans and uh, you know, provide the consensus and work to develop a consensus view. Like, so, so that's how it works. Um, <clears throat> the continuing challenges, I just, you know, we're almost out of time and I, I know we wanna talk about the legislative brief. So I think all this will be my last slide, but um, achieving consensus can be difficult. It's not easy because everybody has their position for, a variety of reasons. So you have to work at it. Uh, there's a huge commitment in being part of the policy forum. You have to actually do some work. It's not just showing up. I mean, if you're on a committee, uh, you know, uh, you, you have to actually do a lot of work. So for example, myself, I do one of these shows every week and it's not, it doesn't instantly happen. You got to go out and find somebody. You got to get slides organized and everything else like that. And so it's a heavy workload. Um, 
you got to manage that collegial, you know, temp people do get mad at you, angry with each other. Um, and uh, it takes money and we always have to look for money and we have to keep the momentum going, you know, the enthusiasm going. And you do that by the annual, you know, evaluation of your organization and, and how can we change? Are we doing the right things? Are we focused on the right issues? Um, keeping that vision and mission intact and, and then the continuity of management, like where do we go? So for example, Maria and I have stepped up the plate to continue it on as people have gone off on their careers to do other things. So now, now's your turn, Maria. We're gonna talk about <laughs> the HSEO and the okay. 2021 legislative briefing. So over to you. Okay, thanks. So next slide, if you please. So um, for, for several years, yes. Yeah, so for several years, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum had um, done a briefing for the legislature and it's taken various forms. Um, at one point, it was quite a, quite a long and elaborate thing, you know, um, several hours and it had exhibitors and everything else. And the idea was to get the folks who are in the energy area down to the legislature and have them um, share information and be there to answer the questions that the legislators or their staffs might have um, and to give also formal presentations on, okay, where are we this year? You know, because things change from one year to the next. You know, you've got technology changes, cost changes, policy changes, um, the different drivers, whether it's environmental concerns, cost concerns, um, energy security, you know, these change from year to year and the people change. And so we thought, you know, the once, once a year um, going down and having this event was one of the things that Energy Policy Forum did. So in the um, grand tradition of, of momentary insanity, you know, just kidding. <laughs> so since, I mean, this year is different. So it's going to be on Zoom and the Hawaii State Energy Office is taking the lead on this with the Energy Policy Forum supporting. And we hope that um, folks will find um, find it possible to go to this link and take a look at this year's event. It's going to be on the 15th of January. So that's next week, Friday. It's two, yeah, maybe two and a half hours long, starting at 2 p.m. So Friday, 2 p.m., 2 to 4.15, 4.30. You know, we're trying to keep it within the time that people have, but also allow for some questions. But it's going to be a little bit like popcorn because we've got about three minutes per speaker. We've got a great lineup and the topics as um, you know, as you look at these and compare them to that 10 point plan, there's a lot of overlap. But this year, we're especially concerned with these five energy assurance and resilience, critical solar pathways to 100% renewable energy, energy efficiency and affordability. That's a really important topic to many, many folks transportation, and finally, utility regulatory review, because some very impressive things have been um, happening at the Public Utilities Commission and with our um, regulated utilities. So we hope that you are able to join us on the 15th, 2 to 4.15 p.m. There is no charge, um, but you do need to pre-register. So please click on the link, sign up, and we'll see you there on Friday. I think you will enjoy it and you'll come away um, better informed about things that you didn't even know you didn't know. I know I do every every year, you know, after these events. I really appreciate the opportunity. So thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you everyone. That's the end of our show today. And uh, thanks Maria for coming on board and helping me out. And thank you all out there for watching this. And please uh, pass this information around to your friends and families or whoever in your, in your network. And uh, just that all they have to do is click on that link to register. You need it because you need to have the Zoom in um, um, link. And that's how you get it. So with that, um, next, I'll see you all next Wednesday on, a, on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha.